first competitor of the day, representing representing France, Charlotte Malaval. Bonjour Charlotte, comment tu vas? Ça va et toi? Ça va? Oui. She is doing fine. I'm just translating. Okay. Charlotte, before you begin, we have a little surprise for you on the screen. Please. So, Charlotte, our lovely Charlotte, this is just for you. The special team of France make this song for you. Ready, guys? Yeah! Three. Two, one, Bye. 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 I will not wait you any longer. If you're ready, please. Rock the stage, wow the judges, and have fun. From France, Charlotte Malaval! My microphone works. Can I have my music, please? Hey. In an attempt to better understand some variables, and being able to connect them to the cup, I decided to spend time in coffee farms in El Salvador. And the most important thing I learned is that coffee and excellence are not always what they seem. Low altitude, wild farm, all bourbon trees, this all sounds very negative. But once I tested the coffee, it was actually tasting fantastic. So from this confusing experience, I finally realized how my personal expectations could blind my judgment about coffee quality. So to unlock the potential excellence that each coffee has to offer, I believe that as a barista, my fundamental role is to build the right expectations and generate emotions, using my power of suggestions to make excellence accessible and maximize your sensory experience. So first, with espresso, I will get you to enjoy the excellence I found in my coffee by influencing your perception using flavor descriptors. Then, the milk drink will help me to deconstruct and reveal the variables creating this unique coffee. I will use my kettle. And finally, thanks to the signature drink, I will unlock another aspect of excellence hidden in my coffee. I will use food pouring science. And I'm sure by now, you're curious about this rabbit. And you're wondering the correlation with espresso. Well, to begin, we need to understand that flavors and aromas don't exist by themselves. It is our brain that creates and interprets them. And actually, it was not a rabbit standing here, but the duck. As soon as I decided to turn the image and attract your attention to the duck, your focus changed because I switched your expectations. So now, from one drawing with one perception, we can interpret two different objects with two very different meanings. And it is exactly the same with espresso. Our perceptions and interpretations of flavors are influenced by the context and the expectations that we create. So from one coffee with one quality, we can interpret different aspects according to different perspectives. And espresso can be experienced through several dimensions. And there probably are dozens of descriptors for this particular cup. But my role is to find the best way to make excellence accessible and maximize your experience. So in order to allow our mind to perceive a clear and pertinent image, these are the characteristics I would like you to focus on. So you can write that the first sip of my espresso will be characterized by a bright plum's acidity. The second sip will be more sweet, with subtle notes of orange. The finish will be floral, delicate, and long-lasting. The body will be major with a silky and very smooth texture. 
So after stirring your espresso, you can put your spoons in the white container and refill the cup in front of you for the details I've already mentioned. And by all means, please take them with you. Good morning, everyone. This is Stephen Morrissey. I'm going to be giving Oreo Zashi and Sasha Sestik will be your commentators for today. This is the finals of the 2016 World Wrestling Championship. What do you think so far, guys? Very detailed uh, presentation. I, what I really enjoy about this is um, she's trying to find the best value in a cup without really trying to buy and source this special and amazing uh, different bike quads. Finding a really nice cup, um, she told us less than we can find it anyway. And uh, without having an expectation of what we're going to face and look for. There's a, very, there's a lot of talk in so the So for a clean and balanced profile, I'm using 18 grams to extract 40. So you will find the bright plum acidity in the first sip, and then the sweet note of orange in the second sip. Floral, delicate, and long lasting finish. Please enjoy it. Come on, people, give it up! What I like is uh, you can clearly see Charlotte's personality and what she stands for. Um, what, what she's really, really passionate about is a barista. And it's, it's pretty impressive to see it so clear and uh, how she's delivering that message very passionately. Yeah, I mean, it was about what, three minutes almost of just great dialogue at the beginning. Sometimes just not even doing anything, just great talking at them. It's a lot of information to give, but she did have uh, visual cards down. Which, you know, when she went through favorite scripts, is that information was there. Do you guys think that's maybe, is, is that a lot to give at the beginning, or is she, does her character and personality make it easy for people to listen and follow along? I believe what she's done is she made a very, a lot of information, but she, she made it look and seem very, very easy. And um, fun, too. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Fun and approachable, and, uh, and I mean, I've known Charlotte now for the last 12 months, and what she is on the stage is what sort of person she is. She's very fun, she's very charismatic. Uh, she's yeah, always smiling, and that's, that's what we've seen. But as, as a barista, she's just showing what her value is. So my it's second step would be to deconstruct and reveal a pattern. And to achieve this, I believe that espresso macchiato represents the perfect combination because it's bringing a subtle degree of complexity while preserving clarity and intensity. So I'm using the same coffee, same rose profile, but this time I'm using 15 grams to extract 36 in order to reduce the solid dissolved in your cup and offering you an harmonious and balanced drink, even with a small amount of milk. Well, of course, what she's doing so well is when it comes to a time where judges have to evaluate the drinks, she's saying nothing. She recognizes it's a busy time for them, that they want to taste her coffee, you know, analyze what it tastes like with a master the drink she's given them. Quite rightly, she's not saying anything at that time. Yeah. This year, we've seen a lot of baristas pouring the signature drink prior to serving espresso, so obviously, it will change what the coffee is going to taste like, but in the same time, it gives them a little bit more time to uh, talk about the coffee. So, when espresso is served, Jack is going to have a. Uh, I will cool down and aerate these extractions, which will enhance the sweetness, but most of all, will retain clarity in your espresso macchiatos. So this represents the bean potential of the coffee I'm serving you today, the result of uncontrollable variables. So it is a red boba coming from the region of Santa Ana in El Salvador. The farm is called San Roberto and is located at 1,500 meters altitude. The soil is volcanic and the trees grow under shade. So to unlock this exclusive quality, we need to apply other variables that this time we are able to control, such as a uniform ripe picking, a careful fermentation and washing, a controlled drying, an adapted roast, and of course, and internet extraction. The last chose to unlock and deliver the potential of so many possibilities in your cup. And finally, the water and milk composition that will also influence the final result by their own complex internal structure. So now that all the patterns are connected, we can see a clear and complete shape. And it is precisely my role as a barista to join all the elements 
make the final associations and connect all the information to help you visualize a coherent and significant image. So I think the, uh, from this year, biggest change is the milk beverages, like under 300 milliliters, so that you can do the, uh, you can up on the creativity in terms of the milk beverage. What do you think about the milk beverage? I think it's great. I mean, I, it's a small detail, but I always like when a competitor is confident pouring without looking at what they're pouring, because when they look at if you're pouring a wet glass, you know, they just follow your uh, eyes. Hot chocolate and almonds with a creamy and velvety texture. So please, cheer five times for my kettle to reach a uniform color on the top and harmonize the sweetness and uniformity in this drink. So quality is the result of an intention and a carefully constructed environment. It represents the wise choice from an affinity of alternatives. So to unlock the delicate, sweet orange and expand the intense bright plum acidity from these beans, we decided to roast this coffee for 9 minutes. We stop it 2 minutes after the first crack, after 23% of development. And because I respect milk temperature, I'm sure preserving the sugar naturally present in it and allow them to marry perfectly with the aromatic profile of my espresso and toss it into rich and complex notes of hot chocolate and almonds with this creamy and velvety mixture. But these elements are working in this unique context. If only one of those characteristics will change, the outcome will be different, affecting the whole experience. She doesn't seem nervous at all with that. No shaking whatsoever. Yeah, she, she's having, she, Charlotte has obviously had a great support from uh, Francesco and uh, she had the same questions I had last year, Mr. Roy, Mr. Himori Zaki. That's one of the reasons why he's not talking too much with us today. He's sitting here next to me and being really nervous. But she poured those drinks like she's poured them a zillion times before and didn't seem phased at all by this crowd. And you can't see at home right now, but this is a full room right now. There is a couple of hundred people watching right now. It's really interesting to see that she's using two different grinders, a EK43 and a K30. Um, so obviously she wants to try to achieve different flavor balance with and each of the course. I would like to share with you another aspect of San Roberto excellence. The flavor of cherry, which was very hard to enjoy because it was covered by the complexity and intensity from the acidity of plums or the sweetness of orange. So now, my goal will be to reveal the cherry flavor that exists in this espresso using three other ingredients that have a similar molecular composition to cherry. Strawberry, basil, and cinnamon. So these ingredients will allow me to create the same image from our brain because remember that flavors and aroma don't exist, our brain creates them. So in my signature drink, I will create a context which will make our perception more clear. So I'm starting by warming up 50 grams of fresh strawberry to add one leaf of basil and integrate all the flavor together. And now I will use 12 grams of this reduction that I will cool down all together with 15 grams of brown sugar syrup infused 12 hours with cinnamon. And now I will cool down my espressos to bring a more malic acidity and underline the velvety and syrupy muscle sensation of this drink. So these ingredients, as simple as they are, will work as a code, a key allowing us to unlock the cherry presence in this complex espresso equation. So strawberry, basil, and cinnamon will function as a context, an illusion allowing the cherry characteristics to be revealed by influencing our brain with similar molecules. So I will ask you to enjoy this drink in two sips. First, the sweetness of orange characterizing this espresso will still be predominant at the first impression. But then, the plum's acidity will be completely transformed, allowing the tangy sweetness of cherry to appear as a very pleasant aftertaste. 
So by transforming the context, the barista can transform your experience. And you most likely suppose that my coffee was coming from this beautiful farm. And there will be nothing wrong with that. But it was actually coming from this one. The farm was wild, through her 80 years old, never pruned, giving such a low yield. So yes, quality can happen anywhere. And the interpretation of excellence only depends on our perspectives. That means that flavor descriptors or farm characteristics are not the end in themselves, but the way to build the right expectations and generate emotions in order to reach the perception of excellence and transcend your final experience. So this is why the barista store of suggestion is so important. To open the door to what each coffee has to offer and unlock their unique potential for excellence. Please enjoy. <laughs> Forty seconds left, just cleaning up the station, fully served, really, really polished. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Where's the champion in France? Round and round and The first one that Such a performance, so engaging, such great eye contact, so Fantastic. happy with that? Hello. Uh, sorry guys, it's that I'm not talking Hello. about. Please, um, I'm going to keep talking afterwards. So, <laughs> I'll be back in a minute, but I'm so happy. <laughs> Let's hear what she has to say. So, how was it? Very good. Very good? Yeah, so happy to have the privilege to do this routine three times. So, I'm yes. really happy. Yeah. Are you happy with your presentation of this day? It looked every. Tu es content avec ta présentation oui. d'aujourd'hui? Oui. oui. So happy to present. Yeah. Okay. So while the judges are finishing this up, after this we will invite three commentators that you can li follow live on live.worldcoffeeevents.org Thank you very and much. they giving you very commentators much. all the uh, presentation through. So they will join us here on the table and they will chat. He will have a little chat with Charlotte. Charlotte, John.